Welcome everybody to the I daily you some... hmm? I hear somebody, that's okay. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. It's Tuesday, December 8th and really nice to be with you again this morning. Um, as you are arriving, please say hi in the chat. Let us know where you are in the world and um, how you're doing this morning. Scale of one to 10, 10 being terrific, one being not feeling so great. And always know that however you are feeling and whoever you are, you are completely welcome here in just as you are. Come back to love. We are all about loving ourselves just as we are and as things are. So welcome everybody who hasn't been here in a little while, a couple people here for the first time. And please know that I welcome your video video cameras on whether you're sitting in front of your camera or not or whether you're in bed with your pajamas on or however you are um, again it's just really nice to see you see your space if you feel comfortable with that even if you're like making a smoothie in your kitchen and you uh, are listening and doing something else at the same time it's still good to see you hey margaret welcome back <sighs> hello all right, thank you for those of you turning your video camera on. It's so nice. You know, it's been so, some, Gregory was just asking me, you know, how is this, how has this um, pandemic impacted uh, my community, our community? And one thing I will say right now is it's really good to see your faces when you're on the screen. All right, let's begin or continue with the centering. So I just invite you to have a breath and gently close your eyes. Nice deep breath in through the nose, ex exhale through your mouth and have out some sound and sigh as you do. And again, breathing in all the way down into the belly and exhale, especially at the bottom of the exhalation, a little huh, and a little squeeze of the belly just to kind of get any stale air from nighttime sleeping and also just any energy that you don't need to hold on to this morning. You know, you just can kind of shake it off and realign with yourself. Close your eyes if they're not already and bring your attention to the earth. And breathing in all her goodness, all her nourishment, all the light. And as you draw that energy towards you, allow it to intermingle with your own at your heart center. So bringing her energy, her energy up from the earth, all that you can gather that feels right to you. As you breathe in, you're allowing your body and your cells to bathe in the nourishment and then to your heart center, just allow some mixing of energies, your own heart love that you are and then allow that again to just like a waterfall bathe the rest of your body down to your feet so doing that a couple of times bringing in the nutrients from the soil the electromagnetic field that's grounding allow that energy to be absorbed with intention, with good intention for yourself and your healing this morning. And then swirl in connection with your heart and the love. So when you're bathing the rest of your body as you exhale, you're also sending that love back into the earth, allowing her to receive from you. So a couple more exchanges like that, allowing Gaia, the earth, Panchamama, however you hold her in your mind to bathe you and then your love to bathe her. And you might include the back of your body. So you're including your whole self front and back. Cool. 
Great. And then a nice deep breath in this next time, wiggling your fingers and your toes. A little wiggle in your hips. Gently open your eyes and come on back. Welcome to those who joined us during the centering meditation. And if you're here for the first time, just notice that I love to hear from people in the chat when they arrive. So saying hi, where you're from, where you're sitting right now, where you are in the world and how you're feeling on a scale of one to 10, 10 being terrific, one being pretty crappy. And every part of how you are this morning is welcome. So don't feel shy about being honest. We've got, um, we've always got a wide range, right? Of feelings inside ourselves and within a, within a community. So thank you everybody for joining us this morning. It's really nice. I just keep scrolling and seeing all your faces and your names. It's really nice to see you. Thanks for being here. And Gregory, thanks for being my guest this morning and our guest this morning. Um, mm, thank you, Kathy. Um, Gregory and I met a couple of years ago at one of the, um, I think it was the summertime puja and pool gathering that I was doing every summer up in New Hampshire. Sad to have missed that this year. And um, Gregory, as I know you, which is not very well, but I know you to be a spiritual, a real spiritual uh, grounding force and, and practitioner um, in the world. That's how I have mm. held you in my mind. And so we were chatting about something else and Gregory was talking about the meditation that he's been doing and teaching and um, mastering for a long time, if we can ever master any practice. Um, and um, I was like, hey, why don't you bring it to the daily intimacy? So he agreed. And uh, I'm really looking forward. Personally, I'm curious if it's something that I learned a while ago. I don't think it is. So I myself am really, I'm always excited to learn new things and new tools. And they've all been so helpful this year during the pandemic. I mean, I think I've latched on to some in particular that I find really helpful in a moment of feeling anxious or sad or whatever um, I'm feeling. I have uh, engaged a practice and I always find it helpful. So um, yeah, I hope that everybody here finds today's meditation really helpful. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Gregory. You're you're zooming in from Brattleboro. I am. It's one of my cloudy. favorite places uh, in the Northeast. It's going to be a cloudy day in Brattleboro today. Boston. Um, thank you, Robin, for inviting me to be here. Um, uh -huh. Robin's right in that she and I have not done a lot of work together, and we don't know each other very well. But Robin's had a profound influence on my life in that that event that she described that I. August 2018 is just, um, who knew you were such a matchmaker? Because there was a puja event at this house I'd heard about for years from a good friend of mine up in New Hampshire. And I pushed myself to go. And I sat down when, we, you know, the main event was this puja on a Saturday night, I think. And um, I sat down next to this woman in this puja circle, if you folks are familiar with that. And it's two and a half years later. And, um, you know, we haven't been apart much since that night that we met in New Hampshire. So thank you, Robin. <laughs> you are so welcome. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I'm such a beautiful. Oh yeah, May it continue. Yeah. So you you really have a profound. I will always you know, <laughs> go with gratitude for having met you. And you know, thank you so much. You are so um, welcome. <laughs> I just pushed the gallery view. It's nice to see everybody's face. Um, I'm Greg Murphy. Um, we're going to be um, learning how to do heart rhythm meditation today. <clears throat> I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to tell you a little bit about, very little about how I latched on to heart rhythm meditation almost 20 years ago. Um, and then we'll, I'll teach you the practice. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll take. That could probably be most of the session, or at least, you know, 
we're at quarter after already. That we'll see how long. I'll try to do that in 15, 20 minutes or so. And one essential part, heart rhythm meditation has literally hundreds of different techniques, but the simple practice is connecting one's breath to the beat of one's heart. At its essence, that's what the meditation is. There's an entrainment that happens there. And I've come to think of that practice of connecting my breath to my heart as a portal, as a portal to whomever, whatever, whatever that one source energy that exists in this universe, it's a way to tap into it. And, you know, I've, I've felt that there's something to be said for sitting really quietly and really still and feeling the beat of one's heart. It, um, it brings me pleasure, it brings me sadness, you know, there's a wealth of human emotions that we feel in our hearts and heart rhythm meditation is a way to, in, in, in a very real way to process those, those emotions on a, if one practices daily on a daily basis, if one practices weekly on a weekly basis. I've been known to not meditate a lot over the 20 years I've been doing this, you know. Uh, as I'd like to say, I've burnt more calories thinking about exercising than I have actually exercising. And in some ways that's how I've approached meditation too, but it's been a mainstay of my life for 20 years. And I can look back at my life and say there was life before heart rhythm meditation and there's life, you know, since then. Um, I'm gonna show a very brief PowerPoint, um, very brief before we dive into the exercises. And I think I'm gonna do that right now, okay? So Robin's sounds, graciously- um, That sounds good. Yeah, and it's so great to see everybody. Like I said, I just switched the gallery view a, a few minutes ago and it's really nice to see everybody's face this morning. I hope you're doing well. So I'm gonna share my screen quickly. I'm gonna go right here. And I'm gonna go to hmm. here from the beginning. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Bear with me. I clicked too many times. It's okay. There yeah. Go. So heart rhythm meditation, that's, that's my tagline. That seems to be what it's about for me. Um, I have teachers, you know, they used to live up in the North Shore in Ipswich. They now live in Tucson, Arizona. And they've described, um, their names are Susanna and Peron Bear. And they've described heart rhythm meditation to me and to others as, in a sense, um, building, you know, building the human character, be becoming the person that we are or were designed to be when we were born on this planet. You know, it, it, for many of us, it's a lifetime pursuit to really come into ourselves in ways that are grounded, that are whole, that are complete, that are the essence and the best of who we are. And, you know, and there are many paths to do that, as we know, and this is but one, but it's the one I've fallen into and it's the one I've fallen in love with. Um, I uh, met this guy for a long time ago, um, beginning my first marriage when I realized, holy shit, what the heck am I doing in this first, I, instead of doing the cut and run thing like I usually did, I got married and um, had an oh shit response and went to, got some couples counsel and met this guy Peron Bear, who um, was running a Sufi household in, in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, which I thought was filled with a bunch of the weirdest people I've ever met in my life. And I just didn't do much with that at all other than see him and his wife for couples counseling. And many, many, like almost, I can't remember how many years, 12 to 15 years later, when uh, a marriage was falling apart, I reached out to him again. And um, the marriage was falling apart to the extent that the ex-wife had moved out and gone to the abode of the message, which is a spiritual community in New Lebanon, New Hampshire. And we had a almost two-year-old who was with her, went with her. And I'd go out there um, during the week or on weekends and pitch my tent in the woods so I could see my kid. And while I was out there, I, um, this is the abode of the message is a Sufi community, 400 acres on top of a mountain in New Lebanon, New York. There's a bookstore there. I went to the bookstore and I picked up a book by this guy, Pirvali Khan, called Awakening. And the book is about his description of what, it, what a human being goes through when a human being comes into higher consciousness, when a human being sort of connects to that oneness. And what is that process like? And, and I'm in, in my tent reading that book and the narcissist that I am, I felt like he had written the book for me, right? <laughs> the, the, the words were, were running deep uh, or hit deeply. He happened to be there that, um, that summer. Um, he had created the abode. He lived in France at the time, um, but in the late 70s, early 80s, he'd created, co-created this community out in New Lebanon, New York. And he'd come back every summer to hold a summer camp on top of the mountain. And one of the weekends that I was there, he was there up on top of the mountain. So one night I wandered up to see what the heck, what was going on. And there was a big stage, big tent, like, you know, a big enough stage, like eight feet off the ground, could probably hold a couple hundred people. 
on its wooden platform under a big canopy. That's how big it was. And I was standing by the stairs on the, you know, the back of the crowd, the stairs where people would come up to get up to the platform. And there's a bunch of people up there already and there was music playing and everyone was waiting for um, Privilei to show up. And when he was at the, when he'd stay at the boat, he'd stay in this little hut on the side of a mountain. And it was, it was like a combination of like your cabin, it's like 10 feet wide. And he would just hang out in there, pretty small space. Someone then drove him up the mountain. All of a sudden I heard a car, car, a car comes up the mountain, parks, and this guy gets out and this is what he looked like. I mean, Jesus Christ, look at this guy, right? Um, and he gets out of the car. This was um, about 20 years ago. And he walks up the steps to get up to the platform. And I'm, again, I'm standing on the platform right next to these stairs. And he walks up the steps to you know, go to his seat. And the next thing I know, I'm on the ground, not the ground, I'm on the floor of this, um, this stage. I just, the force of him walking past me threw me to the floor or I collapsed. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm, I'm down and I don't know what happened, but what happened, whatever happened was enough for me to go, holy geez, what's going on here? Um, and so I decided, to get, I asked for initiation. Um, his son initiated me at the time. He had stopped doing initiations. I remember during the initiation, I had my little two-year-old with me and it was on the side of the mountain and like, it felt like the earth opened up. Um, so that was kind of my introduction. I just dove in. I had such a powerful experience and in a very real way, that powerful experience came from a place of my heart being broken open. You know, there are, there are many paths to, you know, pursuits that one does in one life, but in some ways I had been driven to my knees by this pain that was in my heart of the ending of my marriage and what was going on with the ex and what was going on with me with the ex and the child. And my heart was just in a place where I, you know, I was ready to hear something. And so I, boy, I was just, like I said, thrown to the ground. Um, I got an initiation from his son, but I started, um, that was way the heck in New York and I'm living in Boston. So um, this guy Peron, who I'd met many years ago for couples counseling was now living up in Ipswich. And I started studying with him and his wife, Susanna um, on a weekly basis for a long time. And it got to a point where I felt so connected to them. I asked them for their, they do their own initiations. I asked them for initiation and they said they couldn't because I had been initiated into this other school that was out in New Lebanon, but I, I took care of that. And I've been studying with Peron Susanna ever since, okay? Um, it was a sad day for, I had met Pierre Verlaid once before this event that I just described to you when our, that two-year-old, well, she's now 21. When she was a baby, uh, the ex and I went to see Pierre Verlaid. He was, um, lecturing at Harvard University. And we asked if he would um, do a little baptism on our newborn. The newborn was maybe a month old at that time. So that was the one time I had, I had known about this guy for a long time, but it wasn't until I was in his presence that um, you know, my heart opened enough to say, I got to figure out what's going on here. And what is there here? What is there in his teachings that is attracting me? Um, so there's that. And what attracts me and my, my way into this stuff. Many people have many ways into this stuff. I've met people at retreats who have picked up a book that Peron and Suzanne have written. They were in a bookstore. They picked up a book and they got so turned on by the book they, they came to a retreat. That kind of boggles my mind that some people get that way. But this is my approach to it. You know, um, this is my orientation towards this work. You know, you, you, you Google Rumi and love and you are flooded with hundreds and hundreds of quotes, as you can imagine. So I just grabbed these off the, the internet just yesterday um, and they all kind of speak to me in my own way, you know? <sighs> I just ask you to breathe these in for a while and just see how they sit with you. The second one kind of resonates where I was at 20 years ago. One has to keep breaking one's heart until it opens. And this fourth one really just resonated with me in these COVID times. I went inside my heart to see how it was and something in there makes me hear the whole world weeping. Oh my God, you know, it just brings tears to me just feeling that and what, what we're all going through at this time. Um, a couple more things. I like, I, mean, I like this one. I just want to say out loud, the heart is the secret inside the secret. Yeah. In our hearts, the light of heaven. That's beautiful. It is. It inspired me to go read more roomy, this stuff, you know. Um, in a few minutes, we're going to start doing the practice, but this is, um, I just, I grabbed this slide off the, it's the Institute of Applied Meditation that's behind all this work. That's the school that I belong to. And one thing that's really critical in the practice is this posture thing. 
And this is such a beautiful photo of the posture that you know, we call it the Pharaoh's pose, where the spine is erect, the head's gently floating on top of the spine. Um, the hips are slightly elevated over the knees, so your abdomen has room to breathe. Um, so I just want to, you know, in a few minutes when we get there, I'm going to ask you folks to actually assume this pose. You know, you might need to go get off your bed or get off your couch or go grab some pillows. You know, I, I must admit, I meditate a lot in bed lying down. But if one wants the true heart rhythm meditation experience, there's a, you know, you can just see the connection between heaven and earth there. This gentleman's feet are firmly planted on the earth. His spine is erect. That energy channel is open. And his chest, you know, is somewhat forward. The heart is in a very open position there. So keep that picture in mind as we move on. Um, the science of heart rhythm meditation, I'm really a lay person that, but I figured I'd throw a little bit of stuff out here because this stuff gets taught a lot in the school about vagal tone. This is the, the vagus nerve runs from our brain and you can see it just intermingles into most of the major systems in our body. It's connected to our heart, it's connected to our lungs, it, it's connected to our digestive system. And vagal tone is a term that uh, the medical community use to sort of measure how this whole interchangeable, interconnected system is working with each other. You know, heart rate, digestion, you know, all this stuff that our bodies do day in and day out, right? Um, and the impact of emotions on this system is just huge, right? Um, heart rhythm meditation has been proven. Paran is a scientist. He goes to lots of labs and gets tested all the time, but not just through heart rhythm meditation, but heart rhythm meditation, but vagal tone and the impact of breath and meditation on vagal tone has been documented. And it's a big uh, piece of what goes on when one sits down to connect breath to one's heart. Um, just a slide of, you know, another important part of um, improved, a good quality vagal tone is this heart rate variability factor. You know, as we're breathing, you can see here, this peak here is a breath. Th this, this slide comes from the heart math people. I don't know if you know, if folks know the heart math people, but they've taken a very scientific approach to this and um, you can get equipment to measure and monitor how your heart's doing and stuff. And you can see this, um, here's the breath, this amount of time goes by. And at that time, this person was breathing at 70 breaths per minute. Here they're breathing at 76 breaths per minute. Here they're breathing at 83. And that's a good star strong signal um, that one wants. Um, the slide below that is just a picture of someone who had never done heart rhythm meditation. And after being instructed, after a minute and a half, this person never meditated before in their life. And after a minute and a half, a minute and a half of being given heart rhythm medita meditation instructions, you can see what's happened to their breath heart connection through this graph. Pretty impressive, I think. Um, the emotional aspect of this stuff, you know, it's been proven science has given a lot of attention on the body mind connection over the last few decades. And our bodies create actually create these peptides in response to our emotions. You know, we're literally swimming in a sea of this stuff that's having an impact on our physical well being. You know, the connection between the emotional aspect and the physical aspect. It's really been proven, you know, it's not a mystery anymore. You know, the medical community knows this, scientists know this, and heart rhythm meditation as one practices allows us to just be more in more control of how all our emotions impact our well-being and impact our body, okay? Um, that's a really brief overview. The third aspect of spiritual benefits, I, I don't want to preach about spiritual benefits. You know, my experience of heart rhythm meditation is I just get flooded with a feeling of sacredness. You know, people from all walks of life and people from all sorts of religions and, and you know, people who have no belief in God come to Harvard the meditation and there seems to be some common experience that people have. You know, to me, it feels like sacredness. And um, if we have time today, I'm gonna to go over the element breaths. This is just a quick overview of earth, water, fire and air. They all have their own directions. There's energy, you know, as we breathe in, you know, there's energy that rides on our breath. And by doing different types of breath, you know, as um, Robin was doing this morning in earth breath, we were connecting to the earth. Um, those breaths have different techniques. You know, the earth breath, you breathe in through your nose and out through your nose, the water in nose, out mouth. The fire breath is in through your mouth and out through your nose. And the air breath is in through your mouth and out through your mouth. I hope we'll have a few minutes at the end of this presentation to, to dive into these. We probably won't have that much time. Um, 
just one other slide about this. If possible, you know, maybe I can make these slides available. Um, I don't know if that's if that is possible, Robin. I'd yeah, you can do. you can okay. send them to me and I'll include them. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, times are moving, so I'd like you if you haven't gotten your pillows yet, you know, please go do it and sit up as straight as possible. Um, it's nice to maybe roll the shoulders a little bit back to open up the heart chakra. Your head's kind of floating on top of your spine. Feet firmly on the floor. And I just ask you to close your eyes. We're just gonna close our eyes for maybe just about two minutes or so and just pay attention to our breath. And pay attention to how you're feeling. How's your breath and how are you feeling? I'm not gonna direct you at the moment. I'm just asking you to pay attention to your breath and what does your breath feel like? Is it shallow? Is it deep? Are you holding your breath at all? You know, what is your breath like this morning? Do you have short inhalations and longer exhalations? Or or longer exhalations and shorter inhalations. And know that you could stop and pay attention to your breath at any time and it might be different. If you were to do this six hours from now, it might feel different than it's feeling right now. And take a few more breaths. Getting any final impressions of what's going on. And I ask that you open your eyes and come back to the Zoom room. And I'd quickly like just to hear from people with whether people want to put in the chat or raise your hand and Robin will call on you. Just, you know, what did you notice about your breath and what's going on and, and what are you feeling? Really, we just have a few minutes for this. So Robin, should we do chat or ask people to? We usually do both. So Laura put tender in the chat. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody wants to speak unmuted, please put me in the chat and we'll unmute you. Mm -hmm. Heavy, slow breath from Richard. Irregular, huh? the breath was irregular. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, your comment came to me, so just shift to everyone so everybody can see what you shared. Heavy, slow breath, calming. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kathy. Mm. Mm. Body aches, you know, one, one way to practice heart rhythm meditation, if, if you have body pain is to you know, once you start to practice, to direct the breath to that pain area and see what happens. Mouth out, mouth, uh huh. Okay, thank you. You know, there's something that happens, this, this breathing thing, it just happens all the time, right? We're standing up because we breathe. You know, we walk through life because we breathe. You know, we don't breathe, we're not on the planet anymore. There's a shift in energy when one starts to pay attention to something that happens on an unconscious, you know, on the unconscious plane all the time behind, you know, what we're doing. 
we start to pay attention to breath, energy starts to move. So why don't we, um, knowing that, and let me teach you how to do heart rhythm meditation, okay? And again, I'd ask you to sit up as straight as you can if you can get those hips a little bit higher than, the, than your knees because we're gonna be doing some abdominal breathing here as well. And I'd ask that you close your eyes and assume that, you know, that normal breath that you just experienced a minute or two ago. You know, feel the breath moving through your nostrils. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel how your body's feeling. And feel how your heart is feeling. You know, whatever it is, and whatever is in your heart this morning, just, just feel it. And as your spine is erect and you can let your hands just sit in your lap. You need the palms up, palms down, whatever feels comfortable. And I ask that you just continue to pay attention to your breath. As you feel what you feel, also pay attention to your breath. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna, suggest a few interventions here. And the first one is to pay attention to the length of the, your inhalation and exhalation. Because what I want you to do is make them the same length. It's common for one of them to be shorter or longer than the other. We all kind of walk through life that way. And The fact that maybe we inhale more deeply than we exhale has an effect on our being, on our psyches, and the vice versa. Someone who has a lot of drive, who moves forward in life, who is a strong personality, who creates a lot, probably might emphasize the exhalation more than inhalation because it takes a strong outbreath to move forward in life. You know? But for the purposes of this exercise and one of the basic tenets of heart rhythm meditation is to balance one's breath. So the inhalation and the exhalation are of the same length. And one easy way to do this is to simply count. Yeah, at a steady, you know, not, not, a, not, not a fast pace, but you know, maybe count the exhalation. One, two, three, four, five. And six, your exhalation is six, so make the inhalation six. Whatever feels right for you, you don't physically strain yourself, just find a count that feels right. Could be four, could be eight. I'm going to give us a few minutes to do this.
and use the earth breath for this exercise, which is breathing in and out of our nostrils. Okay, inhalation through the nose and exhalation through the nose. and breathe as silently and as gently as you can. We're not forcing anything here, we're just balancing our natural breath. Now, as you continue this balanced breath, you know, I generate towards a, uh, I tend to do an eight count. If that works for you, breathe in eight counts, breathe out eight counts. But you might be more comfortable with a four or a six or even a 10. Find what's right for you. And as you continue this balanced breath, I ask that you start to pay attention to your heart. And an easy way to help one do this is to place one's hand on one's heart. You may notice a subtle shift or not so subtle shift in energy. We're concentrating on our breath and we're concentrating on our heart. and feel how this feels. We're inhaling, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhaling, two, three, four, five, seven, The next intervention here is just to fully, to really create the deepest breath possible. And actually Robin did this in her exercise at the beginning. At the end of your next exhalation, the very end of it, you know, as the energy is moving down, just pulling your abdominal muscles back towards your spine at the end of the exhalation. And doing so will force any remaining air that's in our lungs out. 
which automatically leads to a deeper inhalation. Okay, so we're doing three things here. We're breathing a balanced breath, inhalation and exhalation of the same length. Our attention's on our heart as we're doing this. And we're creating a full breath at the end of the exhalation by pulling the abdominal muscles in. And then as the inhalation happens, you know, our bellies just fill up like a balloon. This may feel like a lot to manage, but it's actually fine, kind of easy. We're breathing evenly. The tension's on our heart. And we're completing full breaths by squeezing those abdominal muscles at the end of the exhalation. You may even find at the end of the inhalation that the breath rises a bit from our bellies and rises up into our rib cage. In a sense, the breath comes up from our bellies into our heart center. I now ask you if you can actually feel your heartbeat. If your hand is still on your chest, you may feel it there. You may feel that it's just like a love dub. It's like a two beat feeling that our hearts make, you know, as it pumps the blood, as it pumps the oxygen throughout our system. And know that there's also energy that's riding on this breath. The chi, the prana, the ki, whatever, you know, however you define it for yourself. You know, on the inhalation, we're energizing our physical bodies. On the exhalation, we're energizing our etherical bodies, you know, our aura, those layers of energy fields that surround our body. And there's a pulsing that's going back and forth between our physical body and our energy bodies. That's directly tied to our breath. It's directly tied to the beat of our hearts. And it's the rhythm of our heart that drives the flow of energy in our system, the interior and exterior systems of our body on this planet. If you can feel your heartbeat, I'd ask you to start to synchronize this counting that you're doing to the beat of your heart. So if you're breathing to a count of six, maybe you're breathing to a count of six heartbeats. And let the heartbeat be the metronome that drives the breath. If you can't feel your heartbeat, you know that it's there. 
and just keep counting. Or you can try your pulse. You can put, maybe wrap your other hand around the wrist that's on your heart and maybe you can feel your pulse or touch the pulse in your neck and have the pulse be the metronome. When I first started heart rhythm meditation, it took me a few months to feel my heartbeat on a sustained, regular basis. Other people can feel it, you know, almost immediately. I'm gonna do one last intervention here before we stop the meditation. And in this practice, we call it the square breath and it may help you feel your heart. So if you're breathing in and out to a count of six, after the next inhalation, hold your breath and hold it for double the count or double the heartbeats. So if you're breathing the six heartbeats, hold it for 12. Exhale. Let's just do several cycles of this. Inhalation at whatever counter heartbeat rate that is working for you. Hold the breath for twice as long. And then exhale at whatever that count is. Again, fully exhaling by drawing the abdominal muscles in. Now I've done this practice enough that sometimes I have the experience that I am being breathed. And I'm being breathed into. You know, we only have time for me to show you this basic practice and this is it. You, you now know the practice. You know? You close your eyes, you know, you assume the posture, you close your eyes, you pay attention to your breath, and slowly you start to do these, you take control of your breath, you know, you balance the breath, you start to do the deep abdominal breathing, the energy rises into your chest, you pay attention to your heart, you search for that elusive, that could be an elusive heartbeat. And there's a level of concentration. We're finally honing our ability to concentrate we're concentrating on our heart. This pulsing energy center in our bodies, in our beings. Our hearts, which feel so much, you know, our hearts which feel love, which feel sadness, which feel grief, which feel joy, you know? Our hearts contain so much of our experience of being human. And by synchronizing breath and heart, we get to play with those emotions and process those emotions and understand what those emotions are and the hold they have on us in ways that we've just never been possible before. And the more we do this practice, our hearts just continue to expand and have a greater capacity for life and a greater capacity to feel all those things that we feel that make us who we are. So I'm gonna stop right here because we're running out of time. So just take one last deep breath and at your own pace, at your own time. Come back to the Zoom room. I'd love to hear from people how that was. Anybody wanna uh, say me in the chat and share? That was really powerful. I'd love to hear. And also, please 
when you went re-landed, <laughs> I've got to come back. Um, feel free to put something in the chat as well. Is that how that was for you? So, and also Matthew has a question from originally in and out same length to now twice as long. Yeah, that was that was the last piece, um, Matthew, to practice. Yeah, well, it's not so much, it's not twice as long in the out breath, it's no. twice as long as you're holding the breath. Not right, in breath, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and one thing that the holding the breath technique for many of us can make so like the heart come, if you're not feeling your heart, holding your breaths, like, you know, we feel our heartbeats when we exercise, right? We run up and down stairs, we feel our heartbeats. Holding the breath can, in a sense, bring that heartbeat forward and allow us to feel it just by the sheer act of holding our breath. Okay, that's what that technique is for. I thought it was really interesting. I was, I was, um, I couldn't quite feel my heartbeat on with my hand on my heart. I felt mm -hmm. like I sort of could, but then when I, I just put it on my artery here on my neck, and then I noticed that I, well, maybe it's because it was just in the beginning, but I felt like I was breathing slower than my heart beat. So then I sort of worked mm. to synchronize the two and it felt really good to have them synchronized yeah when one can do that that level of attention and there's some space that gets created inside us when that synchronicity is happening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that was really really nice um, Laura's asking to, maybe you could put the slide up again, um, just sharing, and Laura, you could take a photo of it, the element breath, which one is, I love those. I used to teach those at my weekend retreats. Um, yeah, you know, in, yeah, into the nose, out through the nose. Yeah, there we go, that one. Mm -hmm. Those are really nice. Yeah, and when, and when doing the earth breath, really connect to the earth. You're sitting up straight and your feet are firmly planted on the ground and you're breathing up from the earth into one's heart, you know, through the root chakra and sacral chakra mm -hmm. and solar plexus into your heart. You know, this horizontal direction, you know, after doing that vertical breathing, there's a spreading out that also happens. That earth energy moves sideways. And the sideways dimension of our hearts has to do with our ability to be compassionate and share our love, you know? So part of that exercise is once you've, you know, exchange energetics with the earth, you send the, that earth energy out over the rest of the planet. And all these techniques, all these elements have that, you know, you're doing the water breath, you're tuning in, or you're tapping into the crown chakra or the crown chakra above the, you know, there's like a point six or eight inches above our head and you're breathing down from that crown chakra and you're breathing in, in your nose and out through your mouth, and you're just pulling the energy down through our systems, you know, through our spine, through our bodies, just bathing our bodies in that light that comes through the crown chakra. Nice. Yeah. The fire, the simple oh. fire exercise is breathing in through your mouth into your solar plexus, and then having the energy rise up and breathing out of your heart. You know, fire rises, fire creates heat, and that heat of the solar plexus transforms into light as we move it up to our hearts and breathe out. And that's in through your mouth and out through the nose. And the air is literally in through the mouth and out through the mouth, and it's more of an upper chakra energetic thing. A lot of throat energy, throat chakra energy in that air breath. You know, maybe I can come back sometime and we could spend a half an hour doing element breaths. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. All I'm right. Sorry, so sorry we didn't have more time for that today. That's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. What we did was really beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. It was lovely, just calming and grounding. And um, I think most people are saying that same thing, calming, grounding, and, and really connecting mm -hmm. to realign and synchronize with ourselves. That's, I mean, that's the greatest act of self-love. Yeah. And out into the world. Thank you. you know, that, phrase, that phrase, leaving a heart-centered life has become so important, right? And, you know, this is my way of doing it, having a yeah. practice that's based on my heart to yeah. live a heart-centered life, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you, Robin. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. You're welcome, mm -hmm. Greg. Thank you for bringing your being here. I think that's the most powerful piece. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. The, the tools. Well, we are all beings of light and love, and um, let's just bring more of that forth. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. okay.
So next week, uh, I'll send the recording out. Next week, we have uh, dear friend Susie Spivey coming, talking about uh, what's coming, sort of closing the end of the year and moving into 2021. She's a lovely bright light. So some of you know her, she's got wonderful energy. So I'm very excited to have her here and just to have this space every week has been incredible. So thank you so much for being here and um, see you guys next week and have a blessed day. I guess we're ending with the heart meditation because Greg shared his screen again. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. Bye. Lots of love. Have a good week, folks. Me too. Hmm.